Hi, so today I'm going to be showing you how to take any device and make it USB rechargeable. And it's not as complicated as it sounds, um, as long as you have a battery that fits in the device and a little bit of circuitry to charge the battery. For this demonstration I'll be using this Wi-Fi Finder device. It gives you an LED readout of the Wi-Fi signal in your area when you press the button. And I actually don't have batteries that are good for it at the moment, so I guess you'll have to wait till the end of the video to see how it works. So I'm not going to give you a full explanation on how batteries work in this video, but I am going to give you a little breakdown on the circumstances this project will work and uh, the ones where you have to make slight changes. So double A's, triple A's, C batteries, D batteries, even quadruple A batteries use 1.5 volts. So when they're strung together they basically just multiply the voltage so, for example, two AAA batteries will use 3 volts to 2 volts when they're fully drained. Now, a rechargeable lithium-ion or, or LiPo battery is going to run from 4.2 volts fully charged to 2.8 to 3 volts when they're discharged, um, depending on the application and how much power it's drawing. But uh, for simplicity's sake, we'll call it 3 volts. So... In this example here, three times AA batteries, we have a voltage of 4.5 volts to 3 volts. And that's going to work perfectly um, because 4.2 to 3 volts is the range of our rechargeable battery. So that fits in there nicely. Now, anything below that voltage, for instance, a device that uses one AA battery, it's going to run on 1.5 volts. So you'll likely need a buck or a step-down converter um, to lower that voltage. And in an application like this with one 9-volt battery, 9 volts is obviously too high for a rechargeable battery like this. So we would need a boost converter um, to, or a step-up converter. LiPo and lithium-ion batteries come in all shapes and sizes. But one thing that stays the same is the voltage fully charged at 4.2 volts and fully discharged at 3 volts. Now to manage the charging aspect of this project, we're going to be using a TP4056. It's a little charge circuit and it takes care of all the charging. And it takes the USB 5 volts in and outputs 4.2 for the battery. And they come in a few different flavors. They have ones with mini USB ports, one with micro USB ports. This one has nothing on it at the moment because I took one off to make it lower profile. And there's even these here which come with a uh, 8205A chip and that just protects the battery from over discharging. I'd recommend getting this uh, because it's going to protect the battery from killing itself. I'm not going to be using it in this project because I, I'm pretty tight on space to be honest and the battery has one of those built in. Another good source of some charging circuitry is this uh, little USB power bank. I'm sure you've seen these before. You could find them at gas stations and other electronic stores. And if you open them up, you'll find that they have very similar circuitry in there. It's uh, got a micro USB port, and on the other end outputs 4.2 volts for the battery. And this is just an 18650 cell. And it has a little USB port for the output. So here's a little diagram I drew of the TP4056 charge current resistor. And here's the resistor connected to the uh, pin on the chip. And this is a chart of the resistor value versus the output current. So in this case, we're going to be using a 10K ohm resistor. And that's going to give us about 130 milliamps charge current. Now, you want to match the charge current to the capacity value of the battery. So if you have a 400 milliamp hour battery, you should use 400 milliamp charge current. You can go above that if the battery data sheet specifies you can charge above 1C. Uh, but if anything, stay at or below that capacity value. So I'm actually going to be removing uh, the resistor we mentioned earlier. And the way I'm going to do that is just with a soldering iron. Um, you can do this with a hot air rework station if you like, but you don't really need to. This component's not very big. And we're just going to get a big 
glob of solder on the tip here. And as we heat that up, that resistor should just come right off and onto the iron tip. So now we'll clean up those pads a little bit with some good solder. I recommend using a pair of tweezers for this part so you don't burn yourself. Now let's take a look inside this Wi-Fi Finder device. So inside you can see space for two CR2032 batteries. And we're going to be removing those to make space for the rechargeable battery and the charge circuit. So I'm actually just going to clip these battery connections right off. And from here we have the negative and the positive terminals exposed. And now we'll just get a feel for how these parts are going to fit in this case. It's going to be a tight fit. And here I'm just putting a touch of hot glue. to secure our charging module in place. Now off camera I went and modified the back of the case to allow the USB port to poke out and I also drilled a little hole for the um, LEDs for the charger so you can see the status. I'll just uh, plug that in here to let you get a view of that. So you can see it uh, glows green when it's charging. It's flashing red because we don't have a battery hooked up to it. So now we need to connect the rechargeable battery to the battery charger. And then the same connections are also going to go to the, uh, the battery connectors on the device. So we're just going to prep this positive pad here on the device. Get plenty of solder on there. And then connect a bit of wire to that. And solder that same bit of wire to the charger. And now we can trim the excess. And just solder that in place. Now we can finally solder the battery in place. And uh, you don't want to put the battery in position just yet. We want to just um, solder the leads first and go from there. That's one. And that's two. <clears throat> so 
So yeah, now we can uh, sort of manipulate the battery into position. Alright, so let's close this thing up and give it a test. That's the front there. Ooh, that's tight. Okay. Try it out. And one bar, two bar. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what it searches for, but um, it's working. So as you can see, I have it on charge right now. And you could even still use it while it's on charge. And it works. Now this isn't a full tutorial per se, it's more of a starting point to get you thinking about things you could do with this, uh, this method. Um, I'm pretty happy with the result and I'm sure I'll do this on something a little more useful in the future and uh, I hope you do too. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe.